Hi everyone, this is a, a video recording of the, the live website demo that we include in the introduction to C Bioport course, first hosted at the University of York on the 11th of January 2023. This is an Elixir face-to-face uh, -face training session delivered at York. So this is the C Bioportal website. The first thing that you can notice are all of these studies. It's a very, very large resource, lots of different tissues, um, covering all the different work that you want to do. Data are all uploaded from, from public studies and the summary data from where you can't access the raw data, things like in the Cancer Genome Atlas. So we have pan-cancer studies, um, including some whole genome um, data, which is included. We also have uh, cell line studies, and this is a, an important point here to note that there's a 2012 citation and a 2019. So it's likely that the 2012 one is superseded by the 2019, but the original work is kept here um, to make sure that researchers have the same consistent data sets to work on. You can then, you start going down a list of tissue specific studies and you can go into a quicker um, looking for your, your tissue of interest using these links down the left hand side. So one of the data sets that I know really, really well, um, going into the bloody urothelial carcinoma, is the Cancer Genome Atlas 2017 cell paper um, of muscle invasive bladder cancer. Um, you can see here as well, as I mentioned with the cell line data, that there are multiple different TCGA um, links for bloody urothelial carcinoma. The original paper in 2014, with only 131 samples, as opposed to 413 of the most recent one, the data that was included in the pan cancer work, and then what we call a fire hose legacy. So this was an effort by the Cancer Genome Atlas to say when to stop for all the analysis and the public data. Depending on the data set, um, the fire hose legacy um, is a good one to use. Sometimes it's good to be focused on data from a specific paper. Um, so that's what I'm going to do here, this cell paper. So you can select it just by ticking it or, or clicking on it. Over here on the right hand side is an information link. Um, there's the direct link to PubMed, um, and then there's this um, shortcut link, which is the same as down here, explore selected studies. If you're coming at this with a particular hypothesis in mind, rather than just wanting to explore the data, you can query by gene or by a list of genes and do that straight away from here. Um, so what we're gonna do first is explore this selected study. Obviously you can select multiple studies and explore them all in one go. So exploring the study brings you to this dashboard, initially with this summary with clinical data here as well. Um, the heat maps, sometimes they can be quite useful, sometimes they can just be a bit confusing, so I'd use these with caution. In this summary data, you get this initial um, section on the left-hand side showing the types of data, um, how many patients are included. Uh, in this case, the, the numbers are quite similar. The protein expression data is a bit lower because not the entire cohort wasn't, wasn't measured. Um, Sometimes you'll have a study where you have several hundred for mutations from exome data, but then only 30 of them have been done for RNA-seq. So uh, at this point, I'm going to select those where I've got RNA-seq um, and mutations. And so I'm going to click it here, select the samples. By doing any kind of selection or filtering in the dashboard, it recalculates the rest of the dashboard um, to show you what um, is particular to those samples that you've selected. You immediately start having little things like these, these plots for survival plots. You can go to the three bars and then immediately download either the data or the images of these plots. Um, they're not very specific at this point, but um, you can use it to um, perform other analyses uh, later on. Um, you can do things like look at the mutation count here. So bladder cancer is quite a high mutational burden. And instead of just being able to download the plot, you can start to compare the groups. Um, so for example, here, we can compare the groups based on the median. It opens in a separate tab. Uh, and you can, once it loads, sometimes it takes a little bit of time just to calculate. Um, go into survival, and you can see that the tumors with a higher mutational burden have a better survival, a significantly better survival based on median alone. You can see the range on, on this is quite tricky. So you may want to do um, specific bins for these comparisons. Heading back to the summary dashboard, you can see here a list of mutated genes. And that's something that we, we usually as cancer biologists want to start looking at straight away. Now you can see here, PP53, so P53, one of the most studied genes in the literature. Um, 
that comes up top, most mutated in bladder cancer. But then you can also see these other two genes coming up, Titan and Mucin-16. So Titan always comes up because Titan is absolutely enormous. It's a huge gene, so it gets mutated a lot just by chance, which is why up here there's a filtering step for about a thousand genes in this Onco-KB cancer gene list. So if you can do that, you get rid of some of the genes. You also have this extra label here um, for these are the ones in the MUTSIG algorithm. So this is not mutational signatures um, in the way that you might think about the cosmic SBS signatures, but rather which genes have mutations, which would be a signature of them being driver mutations. So you may disagree with some of these annotations if you know your cancer well. Um, so for bladder cancer, for example, KDM6A and KMT2D, both of them do quite a similar job. Um, in terms of knocking out a particular complex, KMT2D is not down in this list because of the way it's mutated. You'll notice as well there's a difference here between the numbers of mutations and the number of patients with a mutation. And that means, as you might expect, that some patients have multiple mutations in the same gene. Okay. You have a similar analysis here with the copy number alterations. So again, you can filter um, based on known regions. Um, for example, in bladder cancer here, this 9P21 um, region is commonly deleted. Um, so that's another one you can do. If you wanted to start looking at some of the other categories, so down here, uh, sex of the, of the patients in the cohort. Um, again, you could start looking at the differences by comparing the groups. So if there's missing data, you sometimes have these NA samples. So you can get rid of those because some of the comparisons don't work well with three groups. Two groups is better. So comparing male and female samples here, you can look at survival and see that there's no real difference in survival between these groups. You can then go into clinical data. Now, sometimes the clinical data is a bit obvious. So the sex is significantly different between the male and female groups, um, as is prostate cancer indicators, unsurprisingly. Um, but there are the, sometimes you do get things coming out here, like differences in smoking or differences in age mutational burden that might be interesting for your study. So if we go back to the dashboard again, just like with the mutations before, if you were to click on say male, it then refilters everything, gives you different frequencies as before. Okay. The other tab to mention here is the clinical tab. Now the clinical data is a massive data frame of all the data associated with all the patients. Um, so you've got your patient ID, your sample ID, um, so the way that numbering works in, in the Cancer Genome Atlas is if something ends in 0, 1, it's a primary tumor, 0, 6, it's a metastatic site, and 11 is a matched normal. So you can sometimes see these um, multiple samples for, um, within TCGA. 0, 6 is all you're gonna see in C-BioPortal. C-BioPortal doesn't typically contain any of the normal data. I have lots of columns here, diagnosis, um, age, sex, type of tumor, race, ethnicity, um, stage of tumor. Now, there are, there's a lot of information here. It's not very easy to use because of all this white space. Um, and you can select additional columns. So a lot more columns, say if you wanted to add in tu uh, tumor burden, um, that now comes in as a separate column at the end. You can go into individual patients to have a look at them and see what mutations they have, whether those mutations are likely drivers, whether those mutations are found elsewhere in the cohort and at what frequency, and whether a mutation is associated with a, a higher or a lower expression of that gene. It gives you a, a bit of a feel for the, the mutations available in individual patients. Heading back to the dashboard, the summary dashboard again, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to search for a gene. So FGFR3 is a gene which is commonly mutated in bladder cancer. You can query it here. When you're querying genes, don't use the mouse symbols, use the human symbols. If you have a typo in it, it will tell you. So this is a, an Oncoprint track. So each column here is an individual sample. And this is showing the numbers of mutations, another number of tumors with these mutations with a key down here at the bottom. Now it's not showing the whole cohort, so you can zoom out and you can see uh, this 17% this have this FGFR3 mutation. Uh, you can immediately start looking at some of the plots. 
Um, so here um, you get some plots which aren't always as useful as you want them to be at first value. Um, remembering with the RNA seq data that because it's because these are normalized counts, it's tricky to compare between different genes in the same data set. So one thing you might want to do is to use the z-scores Z relative to the diploid samples. So it's whether or not a sample is mutated more or less than by chance. You can see here that amplified FGFR3 has higher expression, as you would probably expect, and that deep deletions have lower expression. Change up here, we go into mutations, and you can see again that the missense mutations have a, on average a higher level of expression than those with no mutation at all. So you can start getting a feel for your data and whether or not a mutation is actually having an effect in your samples. Uh, a plot that I find really interesting, uh, really useful for understanding the mutations that you have is this lollipop plot. So a lollipop is showing the, the length of the, the gene sequence with particularly important domains. The lollipops, so these sticks coming up with a, a scale on the left-hand side, show the number of mutations and in what site. Um, it also means that you can have things like this. So um, S249C is a hotspot mutation in, in bladder cancer in FJFR3. You can see that um, 31 mutations were recorded at this site. So it gives you this idea of, of the kinds of mutations that are happening. You can see here that because most of the mutations are missent mutations, they are changing the function of FJFR3, in this case, making it constitutively active. And um, this is suggestive that FGFR3 is an oncogene. If you were to have lots of um, truncating or splice changing or um, sort of frame shift mutations, that's quite indicative of being a tumor suppressor. We are trying to break the function of that tumor suppression. Um, just like with the other things we've looked at so far, you can start looking at things like survival. Uh, so you go into the comparison um, section, look at things like survival. And you can see that whilst it's tending towards the FGFR3 uh, mutated tumors have a, a better survival, it's not a significant difference. If we head back to the dashboard again, instead of looking at a single gene, we can look at multiple genes in one go. So you can, these are the genes that I mentioned earlier on, KMT2D and KDM6A. You query them together, and it loads up information for both of those genes at the same time. The oncoprints appear together, so you can get a feel straight away of whether mutations occur together or separately. You can see with these two genes, if you have a mutation in one, it's unlikely you're going to have a mutation in the other. You can test that with mutual exclusivity. In this case, the Q value is just above that 0 0.05 threshold, but it's tending towards it. And I think, actually, from experience, if you were to change the mutations you were looking at, so remove things like amplifications, um, because both of these are tumor suppressor genes, if you remove amplifications and look just at the mutations that are breaking the protein, um, this tends, this actually then becomes a significant test. It's a really, really important point. By changing the parameters, you are generating a significant test, so make sure you are coming at it with a hypothesis. And just as before, you can do things like comparison and survival. Now, further on in the course, we're going to talk about downloading the data, but there is a quick way to download here. Once you've done your filtering, so 408 patients with the bladder cancer TCGA cohort um, with mutations in KDM6A and KMT2D, you can download the, uh, the data sets that are specific for those changes. So that takes us through the, the, uh, the walkthrough. Uh, one thing I would always suggest is that once you've got lots and lots of filters applied to a data set, rather than trying to individually take them off and you're not entirely sure what order things have been filtered in, I would always return to the homepage. Okay, thank you very much.